In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to call triggers in Mechanum, and we're going to be using our player's attack for that. Now, I usually do this in about two or three waves. The first one's just getting a, the actual animation to fire off a Mechanum, and then the second one's usually something along the lines of, you know, shooting a projectile, maybe a fireball or something like that. If you've got a gun to actually shoot the bullet. And I usually do that through an animation event. And then the third one, or the third step, is usually use some sort of blending. Now for this game here that we're currently working on, I'm going to be doing at least step one and step two. I'll probably save step three until we get back into the 3D stuff. That's generally where I like to do my layers and blending and everything else. But with that said, let's go ahead and do number one. So I'm going to go ahead and select my player. This will open up his animations and I want to create one for attack. Uh, I just want to make sure it's in the player's folder for the animations. It is. We'll go ahead. We'll save it off. And then I need an animation for it. I don't think I actually have one for this particular sprite. Um, duck. Duck is kind of cool. It could be like smashing the ground or something. We have um, front. Nope. After we're done with the attack, you should be able to implement hurt on your own. Well, maybe I'll make that as homework. I think I'm going to use the duck attack. So he's going to like smash the ground and shoot a fireball forward or some particle effect. Maybe it's some sort of shield or something like that. Anyway, whatever it is that you want to do, I'm going to use duck and it's just one frame. It looks like, yeah, that's fine. I've added the animation. So if I come over to the animator, here it is right here. And I wanted him to be able to attack from any state. You might want to change this. Maybe he can only attack if he's moving. Maybe he can only attack if he's jumping. But for me, I want it to be from any state. So I'm going to make the transition to attack. And then when he comes out of attack, I'm going to go back into idle. And then from idle, he'll decide whether or not he's walking or running. So we'll need a parameter. And this one here is going to be a trigger. Now triggers work quite a bit like a bool in the sense that you set it. But what happens is that it, it fires off. It will complete its transition into the animation or into the state and then it just automatically comes right back out and sets itself back to false essentially so let's take a look at that basically it's a fire and forget boolean that's kind of how i look at it so for the transition uh exit timer i'm going to make sure it's off so when we're coming in and instead i'm going to say if attack if the attack trigger is called go into this transition do whatever it is you have to do. But when you come out, what I want to decide is, do I want it to stay in there for the full length of the attack animation? And I think just to start off with, I am. So that's it for the mechanism part. Let's go ahead, we'll jump into our script. And I'm going to be calling attack from update. So I'll come down and we'll need a method for it. So let's create that first. Let's create the method for attack. And all I'm gonna do is just check. We probably should stick to using the inputs for now. I'm just gonna go ahead and say uh, the F key. It doesn't really matter what the input is. Set the input up the way you like it. If you wanna use the left mouse button, use the left mouse button. If you've got a button on the screen, then use that, whatever it is. I'm just gonna use the F key. And I'll just use get key down. And of course, I'll want to use a key code and that code is F. Then I'll go into the animation controller. I'm going to set the trigger. Now if we take a look here, we just need the string name, which was attack. I'll go ahead and save that off. We'll come up to our update. And I'm going to put it right after fixed or change direction. Let me just quickly check here. Yeah. I'll put it in here where I have the check. And the reason why I'm putting it in its own method is I know it's going to have a little bit of a logic, but its own logic, particularly just to the attack. And if you just try to stick everything in update, update gets really long. It's just easier to sort through later on what does what when you have it in its own method. But anyway, we'll go ahead. We'll save that off. And it should work. There's a few things here I'm going to want to clean up. But setting it up just the way it is. Oh, did I call it attack? Yeah, okay. I thought I spelled it different. Let's go ahead and take a look at our player. 
So if I hit the F key, he attacks. And then if I keep pressing it down, he stays down. Uh, later on, we have blending, but well, we can go ahead and try to get the legs to be the same as um, when he's walking. Or we could even have it go so far as maybe you stop. You can't move forward. It's something to look at in the future. But for now, it's called the animation. But I don't want it to be where he can just constantly keep smashing the key. If we were to go ahead and look at the animator itself. So we can just keep smashing the key and keep uh, attacking. I want a timer in there. And I did see something about the walk animation. Let me just see if I... Still get that? No, it's gone. I'm not sure what it was. But anyway, I want to go ahead and set up a timer for this. There's a few ways we can do it. Since we already have an update, we could just set up a traditional timer. But I've actually gotten used just to setting up the invoke. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that one again. So I'll create a serialized field. Of course, it's of type float. I'll call it attack reset timer. And I'm going to start that off at half a second. And we'll need a Boolean value as well. I'll put this down here. And I'm just going to call it can attack. Uh, I'm going to start that off as true. Come all the way down to attack. And now when we hit the F key, I want to check to see if he's pressing F and can we attack? If we can, then I want to set can attack to equal false, meaning we can attack. And then I'm just going to invoke a method that resets the attack time or the, the attack flag based on the timer. So void, uh, let's just call it reset attack flag. There might be other things I want to add later on, but that's fine. We got a method. We can just add them in here. So can attack is now equal to true. And after the animations, what I'll call it. And of course, I'm going to call that through invoke. The method we want is reset. Did I spell it wrong? Yeah. Reset attack flag. And we want to call it in, what was it? Attack timer or attack reset timer. And that amount of time. So the way this is going to work is every frame this attack method's called, and it's going to check to see if we press the F key down in this frame, and as well as if we're allowed to attack. If both those conditions are true, it's going to go ahead and set the attack flag to equal false. It's going to call the animation for the attack, and then in, well, in this case, half a second later, it goes ahead and calls this method or invokes it and resets the flag for us. Let's save it off. We'll come back in. Hit play. And now when you press it, well, let's actually make it a little bit more dramatic. It's only every half second. Uh, in the inspector, let's move it to two seconds. So there we go. I'm smashing the F key, but it'll only dodge down every two seconds. There we go. Of course, that's way too long. Half a second might be too long as well. But for now, it's fine. Great. We've got that done. I think the next thing I want to do is go ahead and create that animation event. But let's go ahead and we'll do that in another video. I actually do have a video on it for working with Mechanism with 3D models. It's going to be the exact same thing. An animation event is an animation event. So if you go ahead, take a look at our Mechanism playlist, you can go ahead and get a head start on it or just wait for the next video. By the way, I'll see you there. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.